Module 8, Investigation 6, The Law of Cosines. The Law of Sines is an extremely useful tool for finding missing links or missing angle measures in non-right triangles. However, there are times when there isn't enough information to apply the Law of Sines. Examine the following non-right triangles to explain why the Law of Sines cannot be used to find missing links or missing angles. Let's see, so if we tried to use the Law of Sines here to find, say, um, this side, x over sine of 32 equals um, 27.6 over sine of a question mark. We don't know either of these other angles here, um, so we cannot use the law of sines. Uh, yeah, same thing with this triangle. Let's take a situation like the triangle shown in problem one, a triangle in which the measure of one angle is known and the length of the included sides are known. For example, suppose we know the measure of angle C and A and B in the following triangle and we are interested in finding out the length of C. So again, this is what we know angle C, length of A, length of B. First observe that the Pythagorean theorem assures that H squared plus B minus X squared equals C squared and also X squared plus H squared equals A squared. So H squared equals A squared minus X squared. Also we have the cosine of the measure of angle C is X over A. So X is a cosine of the measure of angle C. And then we can do some algebra and substitution using this first thing that we know from the Pythagorean theorem with this leftmost right triangle. B minus x squared is b minus x times b minus x. If we multiply all that out, we get b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. And then if we can replace um, h with a squared minus x squared, and when we do that, things simplify pretty nicely. And we get a squared plus b squared minus 2bx equals c squared. And of course, x was a times cosine of the measure of angle c. We can substitute that here. And we get this last expression here, which is called the law of cosines. So if you're looking for an unknown side, say c squared, it's equal to a squared plus b squared, which looks kind of similar to the Pythagorean theorem, but we subtract 2ab cosine of the measure of angle c. And notice these equivalent forms, you should notice the patterns with those. Use the law of cosines to find the value of x in each of the following triangles. Okay, let's take a look at this first one. The law of cosines would tell us that x squared equals 15 squared plus 21 squared minus 2 times 15 times 21 cosine of 53 degrees. That results in 286.857. Then we need to take the square root of 286.857. sixteen point nine and that will be centimeters is the length of angle or side x. Taking a look at this other triangle here we can do something similar x squared will equal twenty six point eight squared plus thirty one point one squared minus two times twenty six point eight times 31 times cosine of 20 degrees. And so x will of course equal the square root of all of that, which turns out to be about 10.9 inches.
Use the law of cosines to, va to find the value of x in each of the following triangles. All right, so here, the law of cosines would tell us that 23.7 squared would equal 14.6 squared plus 14.3 squared minus 2 times 14.6 times 14.3 cosine of x. Now we're looking for um, cosine of x. So we need to solve for it. With a little bit of algebra, subtracting the 14.6 uh, squared from both sides, subtracting 14.3 squared, then dividing by negative 2 times 14.6 times 14.3 that will give us cosine of x. This turns out to be negative 0.345 equals cosine of x and then that means that x is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 0.345. which is about 110 degrees. Okay, and let's do something similar with this triangle. 10.4 squared will equal 16.5 squared plus 12.3 squared minus 2 times 16.5 times 12.3 cosine of x. Again solving for cosine of x we'll have 10.4 squared minus 16.5 squared minus 12.3 squared divided by negative 2 times 16.5 times 12.3 equals cosine of x. So 0 0.777 equals cosine of x. That means that x equals the inverse cosine of 0 0.777, which is about 39 degrees. Before going on, just let me make one more point here. What we've done here sort of demonstrates, um, in general, what we could always do to find the angle. Um, the measure of angle A would always be equal to A squared minus B squared minus C squared. I guess these should really be little a's. Little A squared, little B squared, little C squared divided by negative 2 B C. Oh, not quite. We have to take the inverse cosine of that. Yeah, this is our formula for always finding the um, unknown angle. Anywho, the law of cosines and the law of sines can be applied to other shapes as well by first breaking them into triangles. The diagram below shows how this is done. So we have this quadrilateral, and there's a missing side x. And so we could divide that quadrilateral into two triangles. And then let's see here, we have um, an angle 62 degrees. Boom. So use the information to find the value of x. This looks like a tough problem on the surface and indeed it is um, relatively tough it's pretty open it doesn't break it down for you step by step so first thing we can do is find let's see this piece y y squared will equal 12.5 squared plus 9.2 squared minus 2 
times 12.5 times 9.2 cosine of 86 degrees. That gives us y squared is 222.846. You can take the square root of both sides. And y equals 14.99 centimeters. Now, what else do we need to do to find x? Well, what if we found this angle here? Um, let's just call this one y for a second. Oh, we already used Y, let's call it something else, um, Z. Notice that the law of sines would tell us 9.2 over the sine of Z equals 14.99 over the sine of 86. Which means 9.2 over 14.99 times sine of 86 equals the sine of z. And so z would be the inverse sine of all of that, which let's call that w. Okay, 37.75 degrees is this angle Z. Then notice that this angle, since all the way across angle B is 119 degrees, this one would be 119 minus 37.75. Eighty-one point two five degrees. Now it looks like we have all that we need to go ahead and um, find x. I think, maybe. Um, notice x over the sine of eighty-one point two five degrees should equal. 14.99 over the sine of 62 degrees. That means x is 14.99 over the sine of 62 times the sine of 81.25. And thus, x is 16.8 centimeters. That problem was pretty involved, but it's a good one. It incorporates a lot of things that we knew. Find the value of x in the following diagram. This one looks similar to the one above. I would have probably actually drawn the uh, line here, I think. Let's try that strategy in this problem. So there's x. Um, notice x has shifted from this side of our quadrilateral to this one, and then there's these two sides that we know what they are, which would be in between of this line that we draw here. So. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let's see if we can um, solve for x this way. So we need to find x. Let's see. I wonder if finding this um, length here will help us. I'm not sure, but let's just do it. Let's call this one y. 
Let's see. I think we're stuck. Nothing works here. Um, you could try the law of sines or cosines, but it doesn't work. Actually, putting the line right here doesn't do us very much good. We need this line so that we have two of the known sides in our triangle. Then we can find our unknown. So let's do that. And let's call this one, um, let's not call it Y, let's call it Z. Now, I can find Z because by the law of cosines, Z squared is 17.7 .7 squared plus 18.5 squared minus 2 times 17.7 .7 times 18.5 cosine of 7 or sorry cosine of 128 the angle opposite Z then Z is the square root of all of that um, I found that to be 33 inches about Okay, now that we know this one is 33.3 inches, um, we could find, say, this angle here, then find this one, and I think we'd have everything we needed. So how do we find this angle? Let's call it W. 17.7 um, .7 over sine W would equal 33.3 .3 over sine of 128. So using the law of sines, we can solve for sine w. And then we'll take the inverse cosine of that and we'll get, I'm sorry, the inverse sine of all this and we'll have um, W. Twenty five degrees for W. And then, of course, this angle right here would be 89 minus 25, which I think is 64. And now we can say x over sine of 64 equals 33.3 .3 over sine of 75. And we'll find x is 33.3 .3 sine of 64 over sine of 75. It's about 30.9 inches. 